Hmm, a gaming PC under $500. Sounds like a potato. For all the skeptics out there, let me tell you why this is probably the best price to performance PC you can build right now. So don't run away, keep watching. Welcome back to D's Show and Tell. I cover all things tech, phones, computers, audio and more. So please subscribe and hit the bell icon if that's your filthy fetish too. So this is my first PC video, despite being 13 videos in, and honest truth is, I wasn't too sure what I wanted to cover with PCs with the current market conditions. Prices on graphics cards in particular are still crazy. Yes, prices look like they are on a slight downward trend, but it's still going to be a while before we see anything closely resembling normal prices. As I'm writing this script, Bitcoin has shot back up again, so we'll just have to wait and see. And look, I love a bargain and that sexy price to performance. So today I want to share with you a $500 build that is relatively available right now. The core components are from AliExpress. I know some people can be a bit iffy about buying stuff from there. I personally have had a really good experience. The buy protections of the platform have come a long way. Whether it be faulty or just an item I wanted to return, I've had a positive experience. And just so you know, I've spent a lot of money on the platform. Do ensure that you do the necessary checks in regards to taxes and duties depending on where you live of course. So enough of that, let me tell you all the parts of this build. Firstly, I bought a CPU, motherboard and RAM combo from AliExpress for about $160. That is dirt cheap, let me tell you what I got. So the heart of the system, the CPU. This is the Intel Xeon E5 2640V3, an 8 core 16 thread CPU that turbos up to 3.4 gigahertz. I know that's not the highest turbo frequency, but given that the newer game titles are utilizing more cores these days, you're gonna see later on with some of the benchmarks that we can get some pretty good performance out of this. The Xeon chip was released back in 2014, so it is eight years old now on the 22 nanometer Haswell architecture. I'm cooling it using an ID cooling SC224 XT air cooler, only because I have it from a previous build. I can recommend you to purchase a much loved snowman cooler from AliExpress if you don't have a cooler lying around. The CPU itself fits into the LGA 2011 3 socket on the X99 platform, which as a side note, do have a dual CPU socket motherboard, which I do have on me right now for an upcoming home server multi-VM gaming build. So make sure you like and subscribe so you can see that in action. The motherboard and RAM we're using today is from a Chinese brand called Machinist. This is the X99 RS9, a micro ATX motherboard, and with it I have two 8GB sticks of DDR4 running at 2666MHz. So if you don't know already, these Chinese X99 boards are pretty interesting. They are to my knowledge just cobbled together using old Intel chipsets that are likely sourced from faulty scrap motherboards. They've even been able to include newer features like NVMe M.2 slots on this platform, despite it not actually being a feature back in 2014. This means for the general consumer, your experience on this platform won't be too far off compared to buying a more recent Intel or AMD platform. And don't worry, I will talk about whether you're better off buying a more recent platform towards the end of this video. Now this is a gaming PC, so the most important question is, what graphics card could I put in here that would make this any better than the hundreds of other budget gaming builds on YouTube? So this is a card that is known but somewhat forgotten. It's a 5GB NVIDIA GTX 1060, which I picked up for $250. I think prices have gone up a smidge to $265 now. Most people probably haven't heard of this card, and that's because it was a Chinese exclusive card that was aimed at internet or LAN cafes. It is a slightly cut version of the 6GB 1060, 160-bit memory bus versus 192-bit, but that extra VRAM over the 3GB version is a godsend. Regarding the $250 price tag, GPU prices can vary where you are and at the time of watching this video. So I just want to be clear that when I ordered it, it was a phenomenal deal and I encourage you to keep an eye on the card and compare its future price with GPUs in your local market. Onto the other parts of the build, I'm just using an old Thermaltake case I have. This is a H17. If you want to keep costs down, I would suggest perhaps a case and PSU combo. The Thermaltake Versa H21 combo comes with a 500 watt power supply, which is going to be sufficient in powering this system. The power supply I'm going to use in this case is the EVGA 850GA, only because this unit will be used in all my future builds. Lastly, I have a 240GB Western Digital Green SATA M.2 SSD. It was cheap and from a previous PC that I had. My recommendation is always going to be a SATA SSD over NVMe, provided there is a sufficient price difference if you're just gaming. 
In regards to system settings, I am going to do a turbo unlock as by default these boards won't let you turbo boost to the max on all cores, which is a must to get the most out of these Xeons. I'll link the Mi 899 tool that I use to do this turbo unlock and instructions. Mi Cons has an excellent YouTube channel dedicated to testing these Chinese motherboards and CPUs of AliExpress, so definitely check out his channel. I've specifically chosen the X99 RS9 motherboard due to the compatibility with this tool. I would suggest you do your own research if you are looking at different X99 motherboards. Otherwise, you'll need to do it the old fashioned way with a custom BIOS flash, which is going to require a little bit more know how. I also want to mention that this build would not come out of sleep mode without a hard reset. It's not a big deal for me personally, but I just wanted to mention that. Okay, now let's get into the benchmarks. Firstly, Cinebench. 618 single core, 7,251 multi-core. For context, that is a multi-core score similar to the processor like the i5-9600 or a Ryzen 2600, so it's not too shabby. The single core is on the lower side due to the aging architecture, but shouldn't hinder the performance too much, particularly when paired with this level of graphics card. I run all my games at 1080p. CSGO, I run at medium settings. Average frame rate is 211 and 1% low of 83. If you have a high refresh rate monitor, you'll have a very smooth experience. Call of Duty Warzone, I've run this at medium settings at 80% resolution scale, 1080p medium and I got 103 frames per second and 59 1% lows. If you run this at 100% resolution scale, you can hit around 60 frames per second with some dips below that. So if you only have a 60Hz monitor, you can find a sweet spot between 80 and 100% resolution scale. Shadow of the Tomb Raider using the in-game benchmark. Low presets average 73 frames per second with 57 1% lows. I did also run it at medium and was getting just shy of 60 frames per second average, with 1% lows in the high 40s. So if you're after a bit more quality settings at a sacrifice of FPS, it'll also do fine. GDA5 medium settings again, 108 frames per second average and 68 frames per second 1% lows. GDA5 is an older title, so as expected, no issues running this game. Forza Horizon 5. I've run Forza using the in-game benchmark medium settings, 68 frames per second average and 56 frames per second minimum. The game does suggest a high preset, which I don't agree with as you won't quite hit 60 frames per second average and dips would grow even lower. Lastly, Assassin's Creed Valhalla using the in-game benchmark low settings, 64 FPS average and 42 1% lows. That's going to be a very good experience. Could you run the graphics at medium? Yes, and you're averaging the 50s. If you're playing this game on a controller, a lower FPS is going to be less noticeable. As you can see, this system is a very capable 1080p gaming machine, probably some of the best bang for buck. I would imagine the person that might look at a system like this after a solution they might be able to upgrade in future when graphics cards come down in price. This system as is, I would be comfortable pairing it with a GPU up to a RTX 3060 Ti, which is equivalent to a 2080 or a 1080 Ti if you're looking at older cards. The AMD equivalent would be a 6800. I believe that in those situations, you will probably be CPU limited. CPU upgrades are going to be limited on Xeons on the X99 platform, but on AliExpress or eBay, depending where you are, these Xeons are going for an excellent price. And you can even go an 18 core 2699v3 if you're also using the system as a workstation. Now, before we get ahead of ourselves, I can already hear a certain crowd screaming about getting a cheap Ryzen system over this, and I would agree with them. Though with a build like a Ryzen 1200 AF, which is a four core on their 12 nanometer architecture with a B450 and 16 gigabytes of RAM, it would definitely cost you more than the Xeon bundle. So you will need to step down the graphics card from the five gigabyte 1060, which to me is a shame because I think it's just right in terms of 1080p performance. If you had to step it down to the three gigabyte version, for example, you're gonna struggle with that VRAM limit. And yes, you could go a cheaper board, maybe an A320 and eight gigabytes of single stick RAM, but the A320 board is gonna limit your CPU upgrade options when the time comes. And that single channel memory is gonna gimp whatever CPU you have in there. And with all that being said, it's probably still a better choice for the general consumer. You'll get a warranty and the build is gonna be a lot more straightforward. Other alternatives, if you have a bit more to spend, maybe an APU build like the 5600G or the 5700G, you will lose even more gaming performance, but if your upgrade horizon is much shorter, all you need to do is buy a graphics card and those CPUs are more than enough to pair with high-end GPUs. Intel builds, I probably wouldn't recommend anything less than the latest 12th gen, but no way you'll get a decent 12th gen budget build at this price point. 
Older generations have little appeal over a Ryzen system in my opinion. Lastly, I'll quickly touch on the power draw of the system. At idle, it was around 60 watts, and under load playing some Call of Duty Modern Warfare, I was pulling 190 watts on average. All of these were measured at the wall. So my recommendation is going to be different to other YouTubers out there. I'd say it's worth it if you're a hobbyist like me and comfortable diagnosing and fixing issues that may arise from a build like this. Not that I encountered any, but you never know. The turbo unlock is really easy to do with a program developed by Mecon, so even if you're not that experienced and just want to explore and tinker, this would be suitable too. CPU upgrade options are limited, but they're also really affordable. For those that want more peace of mind with warranty and a straightforward build, you will need to stick to budget-oriented retail available parts. That's all for this video. Let me know if there's any additional games you want me to test in future builds. Apologies for not posting last week. Work and life in general has been busy. And because this is my first PC related video, there's been a lot more setup required on my end to get this video out. But for the most part, new videos every week. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.